welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. My name is Ryan. When I put out videos like this, really get, want you guys to understand the, the focus and the theme of these portfolio reviews is to uh, understand how, I, how I, I own these assets and not necessarily what I own. What I mean by that is I don't want you coming in and checking out a portfolio review and just, and just going out and trying to cookie cutter copy what it is that I do, okay? Um, I roll these out for you guys to understand where in fact I own these stocks and these passive ETFs that I own. And that's way more important in understanding why this flagship account is so important. It's the backbone of my message. The self-directed Roth IRA account is different than a managed Roth IRA account, okay? And so many people for years went with out understanding the difference between the two, it's really a lot of the reason why I started the channel in the first place, because working on $120,000 plus, and as this grows into the future, this is really going to become an amazing asset uh, in my total comprehensive portfolio in that it will be tax protected and wealth preserved. So no account gets more attention than uh, both of my Roth IRAs. They, they get the lion's share because I'm the most critical of new holdings. I'm the most critical of liquidations. Uh, and I share that openly with you guys. So stay tuned as we conduct the review, guys. We're going to jump into it and begin now. So it doesn't really get any more important than this. These are my flagship accounts. This is one of two Roth IRA accounts I have. Um, this, for organizational purposes, will consider to be Roth IRA account number one. This is my wife's account. This is how it shakes out. Um, this has a, a good mix of uh, a passive element with some dividend growth, uh, as well as some speculation. Um, this really tries to cover all bases. The deliberation that I go through before I take investments within the Roth IRA um, is very, very critical. I'm, I'm very, very careful with what I do in here. I try to keep the speculation uh, to a minimum here to generate some capital. I do some swing trading in here. I do some long investing in here. Um, I, I try to do it all. I, I'm really trying to protect those tax uh, protected returns. Okay. Now with that, um, the large speculative positions are highly on, uh, SoFi, which is social capital. Now the SPAC, as well as the, uh, SoFi warrants, uh, in here, but the risk reward profile just kind of speaks to my conviction. Now, highly a publicly traded company. Now, uh, SoFi needs to go through the SPAC process, which, uh, I'm very well versed on, I won't pay a dime more than what I've got for the warrants, less than $10 a share here in my warrant position at $250. i am totally okay with that. Um, but I, I really think that having a little bit of speculative growth is something that I, I like. I, I think it allows for some opportunity for some accelerated capital growth within the Roth, um, that of which I can take and leverage into more value positions as those positions mature. And as I want to take and roll some profit off of some of those. Um, now, the aggressive growth uh, arm of this portfolio has been established in the new position of Arc G. So, this is a starting position, just over a thousand bucks. Nothing crazy here uh, with Arc uh, Genomic Revolution. It's, it is my favorite. I like Arc KK, but this is the only Arc ETF that I put within the Roth. And this adds a little bit more of a, of a management arm, uh, diversified, yes, with the ETF piece. So unlike the single stocks that I hold on, on the SPAC and the warrant and, and the newly formulated Hylion, it, it adds a, a different kind of a, a flavor in the portfolio of, of some aggressive growth and from a dividend perspective, excuse me, a, a passive perspective. But um, that's the passive section here. So the rest of the portfolio review will be focused on um, the value aspect and the large uh, cap growth within this because if you pay particular attention to how I wealth build, um, I pay 
very much attention to utilizing all five of my strategies within each of these portfolios. Really, the idea is to grow these up because this is worth 124,000, uh, give or take a few bucks. And the importance is to wealth preserve that over time, to keep it always growing, uh, and to understand that when I do reach that target um, quasi retirement date, whatever the heck that means, of 59 and a half, um, that these renderings can come off of this portfolio tax free. Um, and that's a great opportunity to, to, to seek out. Um, another aspect of this portfolio that's worth highlighting right at the top of the coverage is the fact that I own real estate within this account the way that I do. And that's through Realty Income Core. And you'll notice that this is a fairly large position. This fluctuates a little bit here. I, it ran up really nicely when I bought it. Then it ran all the way down. I was uh, in some deep water with, with Realty Income, a few hundred bucks, nothing too crazy. Now it's back in the black. I don't own it for either one of those two reasons. I own it for the dividend, the monthly dividend in here. It's about a $9,500 bill in a, a realty income, and that 152 shares is a very, very important staple in this portfolio or cornerstone that is constantly generating income within the Roth. Now, these are unqualified dividends, so it's better to own them in the Roth IRA. So as they generate in dollar cost average, I'll build that position up over time with the understanding that I'll probably turn that drip off someday and render that profit uh, outside of the Roth when they are eligible to be rendered. Okay, um, so that's the real estate aspect of this. It's the only real estate holding that I have um, within this portfolio. So it's a very, very important holding to me, but I can't think of a better uh, name to own. I, I know there's a lot of bullish thesis around Stag industrial I, I don't I don't see it um, I I don't like the name uh, I like the space um, I don't necessarily like the stock and I don't like the uh, the niche piece of business whereas realty income is a little bit more spread out and diversified across their portfolio of businesses so the big tech is covered here big tech value and Cisco at the top of the uh, the review with Cisco systems it's really caught fire and come back nicely I'm very, very satisfied with that. And I'm reviewing through here uh, along those same lines. Microsoft, I hate to even call big cap value anymore because it's just taken on a mind of its own and, and really become kind of an amazing uh, mega cap growth story in technology. Nonetheless, Microsoft and Cisco kind of round that aspect out. And I, I think those two picks complement each other well. I like owning those two together. Um, you'll see something similar in my portfolio when I roll that out between IBM and Apple, where I've got kind of that old tech in there and, and kind of that emerging new tech, uh, Apple, as it's evolving and, and getting into new pieces of business, as IBM is as well. But I think they're two complementary picks within the same sector. Um, that that's my only point on that. Um, CBS Health and Healthcare is is great. I own uh, CBS Health and Pfizer both here in this portfolio uh, to give myself some exposure within healthcare. Happy to do so. Two great names. Um, CVS has has been nicely. It's come off a little bit, providing a little bit better entry. It ran up there, kind of irritated me. So I had some contracts written against it. It blew right through my strike. Um, so I had to actually un, um, unwind that for the first time or unzip that uh, options premium. So I, I took a little bit of bath on that and learned my lesson a little bit that, you know, it doesn't always work out. Um, that's fine. I've got some uh, consist, uh, contracts currently on CBS that need to roll off. That's basically what I did is I, I rolled it forward to try to salvage that position a little bit. And that's fine. Um, so uh, healthcare with Pfizer as well. Pfizer's a nice big position. It's it's sold off huge. Pfizer's an entry right now at thirty four seventy two. Um, that's kind of silly uh, and um, nice entry. If you were looking for some healthcare exposure in Fi uh, Pfizer, you could pick it up right here. Um, nice nice bargain on the charts here uh, on the bottom end of the channeling range. Uh, financials with Wells Fargo as well. Uh, with J.P. Morgan. Those are two of my anchors in the portfolio that kind of round it out. Um, and then this is a fairly heavy uh, staples laden portfolio um, with Walmart, 
um, just as a, as a nice bottom end staple. Well, Walmart, I think, is a great company to own right here as well as Philip Morris that's just snuck into the uh, to the black here. So some capital appreciation with Philip Morris, as well as the nice dividend really helps embolden this portfolio from two different perspectives. Procter & Gamble in Staples as well, Pepsi in Staples, so, you know, Kraft Heinz Foods, so some, some pretty heavy staples in this portfolio. I, I get it. Um, I'm, I'm a little overweight staples. It's just unfortunate I've got to be a little more patient before I can um, look to, to, to liquidate a position. I'm not sure where I would trim some profit because I like these names. Um, I do have some contracts, I believe. I believe Kraft Heinz has actually blown through the strike. So if that ends up getting liquidated at my strike price, I'm totally fine with that. I'll have collected the premiums uh, on that and, and and fine at fine and dandy I set that up to be beneficial both ways and, and I'm okay if that ends up liquidating no big deal not the end of the end of the world Chevron anchors my big oil it's the only oil holding I have in this portfolio uh, I've got the other two majors in the other portfolio and then the supplementary picks in the dividend growth portfolio to round out my oil exposure um, which is which is exciting enough and um, 3M in industrials there rounds out my industrials exposure nothing too crazy uh, and then finally Visa as my uh, technology pick uh, helps to really complement as well in the fintech uh, area of technology to help round out the uh, the, the Cisco and the Microsoft pick um, and then um, my, finally my passive aspect of this kind of blends into the portfolio uh, with the VOO, which is uh, domestic markets here, and VEA, which is European markets. Um, two very simple uh, holdings here in, in each of those respective markets. Remember ETFs, you're buying markets, you're buying total markets um, in certain uh, aspects. With the VOO, you're buying the S&P 500 which is large cap domestic market and VEA is actually developed total market. So a good way to diversify uh, beyond domestic borders here in the portfolio. And that really rounds out the comprehensive review of Roth IRA uh, number one. With that, we'll kick you back to YouTube. We'll conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the Roth IRA account number one. Hope you appreciated the, uh, the how this uh, portfolio has kind of taken hold here. Um, I sure am. I'm, I'm stoked at the progress. You know, we'll continue to build out. We'll continue to evolve in a, as an investor. And, you know, sharing the message through social media dumb, does come with its downturns. You know, you guys see every, every move I make, I kind of live my investing life through social media, through the tutorial that I share. Um, with that said, it does speak to my conviction of my program. I want you to think about that for a second. I don't have to share this. I don't. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a shake away from a half a million dollars, seven to 10 years, I'll be a millionaire. Okay. And I, I, I share this openly to empower one investor at a time to come on and see what's possible in investing. And if you heard the message, if you can sit back and say, wow, you know, this guy's right. He, he doesn't have to do that. The power of social media allows him to do that, but he doesn't have to. He does it by choice. He does it because he wants to, to come on and see a portfolio like this that's built upon a blue collar salary is impressive. And it's a success story to be shared. And I'll be the first to tell you that there's nothing that I've done that's just incredibly special. There's nothing that I have done that's so unique that nobody can follow in my footsteps. As a matter of fact, it's the contrary. I believe that this absolutely is scalable to the masses. And I think if people really understand and resonate with my message, they'll hear that very fact in that they can do it too. So make sure and subscribe to the channel, leave your comments and share the message with folks out there that you know might be interested in investing, but just don't know where to start. Bring them on. We'll help them out. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future. Mm -hmm.